Today we're going to take a dive into the world of delitting, but before we start, I should mention that this will be my first time attempting to delit a CPU. Although I've been building PCs for around 10 years now, I've never been able to convince myself to delit because I didn't want to void my warranty, but after doing extensive research and combining all of the info I read online, I decided to give it a shot. If you are looking to delid your CPU, I'd recommend watching not only my video, but multiple other videos before actually giving it a shot. The main reason I want to delid my CPU is simply because it runs hotter than I'd like it to. The 8700K IHS is not soldered on like it used to be, but instead Intel opted for using some cheap thermal paste. This clearly causes a lot warmer temperatures than most users are comfortable with. I currently have my 8700K running all cores at 4.7 GHz at around 1.25 volts, and under an A to 64 stress test, I hover around the low to mid 70s and I max out at about 84C. Considering I have an NZXT X52 240mm water cooler, these temps are a decent amount higher than they should be. I've seen tests where deleting and using liquid metal lowered temps of an 8700K by up to 20 Celsius. Running at lower temps will not only allow me to push my overclock if I wanted to, but also hopefully increase the lifespan of my CPU. Deleting definitely isn't a beginner's task to take on, but it also isn't as complicated as it might seem. A delitting tool is a must to prevent any damage to your CPU, and you can find an aftermarket delitting tool on Amazon, or you can get the Bowers delitting tool for a little more. You'll also need to choose on whether or not you'll be using high quality thermal paste or liquid metal. Personally, I'd go with liquid metal, as that will yield the biggest improvements, but I do understand if some users aren't willing to risk potentially liquid metal shorting anything out. The kit I purchased, which I will link everything in the description, honestly isn't as bad and feels pretty well made. Not to mention it also comes with a template to relit your CPU if you do decide to go with that route. I decided to leave the CPU deleted and relied on the CPU socket to squish the IHS onto the CPU chip. Most people that delit go with this route as relitting isn't the smartest idea because most users use liquid metal which eventually requires the user to replace the liquid metal with age. Liquid metal does not last nearly as long as good quality non-conductive thermal paste such as Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut or Arctic MX4, so definitely keep that in mind. The process is as simple as inserting your CPU into the slot in the tool and tightening down the screw. It pushes a little platform that applies pressure from the side of the IHS, which eventually frees up the adhesive keeping the IHS glued to the CPU. Once the IHS is freed up, loosen the screws and remove both the CPU and the IHS as they now need to be cleaned. You can easily take the big chunks of thermal paste off with a clean bounty and finish cleaning both surfaces using isopropyl alcohol. Make sure you get all of the old thermal paste off, as we clearly don't want none of this cheap thermal paste interfering with the liquid metal we'll apply. I ended up going with Thermal Grizzly's Conductor Knot Liquid Metal because of the overall positive feedback online. When squeezing out the first bit of liquid metal from the tube, it's always a good idea to squirt a little onto a paper towel to prevent any trapped air inside the tube from squirting out an excessive amount onto your chip. A little goes a long way with this stuff, so start with a small ball of liquid metal and use the included swaps to spread the liquid metal over the whole chip. Do the same to the area of the IHS that will be in contact with the chip. Now there's a lot of different opinions on whether or not it's necessary to cover the exposed contacts on the top of the CPU, but in my case, I am consistently moving my PC two times a week between different locations, so I decided to be safe and cover the gold contact points with top coat nail polish. This will prevent any liquid metal that may squeeze out to the sides from shorting anything out. Just in case, I'm also going to leave a thin layer of silicone glue that held the IHS to the chip to prevent any liquid metal from dripping out of the sides of the CPU onto other components in my case. Once the CPU is delated and liquid metal was applied, it's as easy as installing the CPU back into its socket and reinstalling your cooler. Most people often opt to apply liquid metal between their cooler and the IHS as well, but in my case, I thought it might have been too risky, and to prevent any liquid metal from potentially damaging my components, I decided to go with Arctic MX4 as it is a non-conductive, high-quality thermal paste that should give me good heat transfer either way. If you haven't seen my video where I tested the thermals of the Ghost S1 with the same specs and cooler, make sure you check it out. But in summary, in those tests I saw my CPU idling at 34 Celsius and under an A-64 stress test for about 10 minutes, the temps maxed out at 84C. Right off the bat, I did notice that my CPU was idling a lot cooler than before. Now with the CPU running the same specs with the only difference being a D-Lid, I am idling at 28 Celsius and I saw max temps of 63 Celsius after running the same A-64 stress test for 10 minutes. The difference is incredible and now I might actually consider giving the Noctua L12S a try for my PC as I'm sure that that cooler can keep my temps well within spec. The results are clearly in the testing, but the real question here is whether or not it's worth it. 
For an average user that may leave their CPU at stock clocks or only slightly overclock, not really. All of these tools will run you about $60, so it really isn't worth it if you're not looking to push your CPU. In my case, it was more of an experimental thing. Plus, running such a small case does increase the temps of my components overall, so I did benefit in that aspect. I also did overclock my CPU to a pretty decent speed over stock, which delitting definitely helped me keep my temps down as well. Overall though, if you're looking to push your overclock or just want better thermals, delitting might be the right choice for you. I can definitely see why many users opt to apply liquid metal to their CPU, because honestly, this stuff does work. I'll definitely be keeping you guys posted on whether or not I have any problems down the line, and if you made it to the end of this video, thank you for supporting me. As always, thank you for watching, and please consider subscribing.